Hello again everyone and welcome, my name is Jim, welcome to The Loft. Today we are going to be covering stacking with Unified Protect. More specifically we are going to be stacking a pair of NVRs, the non-pro NVRs, which has become a thing after the release of 3.1.9 firmware from Ubiquiti. Uh, it's also coincided with the releasing of 2.8 Unified Protect software which has a lot of fixes for stacking in it, and hence why I've held off making this video until that was out. So, without further ado, follow me as I show you a pair of NVRs. And here is my pair of Ubiquiti Unified Protect NVRs. As you can see, the bottom one is already up and running, hence the blue light. The way that Ubiquiti stacking works, it allows you to pair two, currently, uh, NVRs or NVR Pros. You cannot mix NVRs with NVR Pros, so you cannot stack an NVR with a Pro, and you cannot stack a Pro with an NVR. The way the Ubiquiti stacking system works is you have a parent and a child device. Now, the only two main prerequisites I found, number one is you need two, and number two is you need to make sure that the hard disks or the hard disk capacities and configuration matches between the two devices. I have got a pair of two terabytes in each of these units. I have tried it with a varied disk configuration and I just kept ending up with one device saying it had no storage. So you have to make sure you match it. The other consideration I will say on this is be prepared that you may have to lose all of your storage stored CCTV data on your parent device. I have had some problems with, when stacking in that it formats both arrays at the same time. So that is a caution. Be prepared to risk the data on there currently. Not every time, but that seems to be one of the problems I have found with stacking. We'll see how that behaves today. Other than that, you only need to make sure that the devices are plugged in and stacking is very, very simple to set up. So just to show you, I currently have lying around here, we've got an AI Theta plugged in, we've got a G5 Flex plugged in, uh, I've also got a doorbell and a G5 Bullet plugged into this system, just to demonstrate how it behaves and how it balances cameras. So what I'm now going to do is leave the loft, because it's very hot and sweaty up here, and go down to my machine where we'll pick this up. Now, here you can see we're all logged in. One thing I will advise you to do before you stack your NVRs, First of all is to make sure the protect is up to date. The second thing to do is to make sure that if you wish to set a static IP address for your main, so the parent NVR, you do so now. One thing you cannot do currently, and this may change in a future release, is you cannot set a static IP address for the child NVR currently. This may change, but as it stands, the second or child NVR is on DHCP, so be aware of that. Now you can see over here, we've got three cameras to add, which we'll deal with them later, but you can see the other NVR is plugged in and booted up, and you get the option to stack. Now, when you click stack, you are then brought into the stack NVR, basically wizard. Um, one thing that you may get prompted on, this will not, but you may get prompted on, if the NVR is new out of the box, it will, do a firmware update and make sure that the firmware versions on both NVRs match. Obviously, it has to be brought up to at least 3.1.9 to uh, be able to stack. So we're going to go ahead and click Stack. And this does not take long, but I'm just going to fast forward through it. And there we go. NVRs stacked successful. And you'll see up here the picture changes to a pair of NVRs and we also gain here both NVRs visible in the main dashboard. Now, currently on this NVR, I have a G5 bullet, which is on NVR 26E. Unfortunately, currently you cannot rename these yet. Again, that may change in a future release, but you have to know which NVR is which by its MAC address. And you can see that we can also see both the other NVRs. I'm going to go back to the main console for now and go into storage. And you will see in here the current disk arrays that I have are reinitializing because of the amount of factory resets I've been doing to test this. But you can see now we have the UNVR, which is the parent NVR, and we have the child NVR, which is the 
stacked NVR. You can see both of these have matching disks and they are both currently reinitializing their disks. As I said previously, I have experienced with stacking that sometimes you will have to reformat the array and this may reformat both arrays. As it stands, there is no official guidance from Ubiquiti, but in my testing, I am yet to find that if you have a mismatched, basically, storage protection system, that the uh, NVRs will display a storage on one, but the NVR with a mismatched storage will display no storage available, even though the disks are online and synchronized. So be aware of that. Now, other than that, there's not much else that changes. You get the ability to view about, and you can view some information on the NVRs, but nothing particularly useful in there. Um, the main thing that stacking gives you with Ubiquiti NVRs is additional capacity. Now, once you have stacked your NVRs, you will notice on the main dashboard, you gain an additional option in the middle left-hand side, which allows you to specify which NVR you want to look at the system status for. You can see here on 6E, we currently have one camera adopted and it's saying we've got two terabytes worth of storage, which gives us 25 days and three hours. If we switch to the secondary or child NVR, you'll see that there's no cameras currently adopted to it. and There's no storage bar because there's currently nothing stored on it. Obviously, once we add a camera, that will populate. If we go and look at the devices waiting, you'll see here that we've got the AI Theta, G4 Dorbert Pro and G4 Flex ready to adopt. And you will also see that the system has assigned them NVRs. You can change this. So what I'm going to do is I will go and adopt the G5 Flex. That will adopt into the E6D NVR. And once that is online, you can see here a picture of the NVRs themselves. And under settings, you get the option here, which says NVR, and you can specify, actually, I wish that unit to be on the other one. Select that, and you will get this warning, and take heed. All prior recordings will be erased. Are you sure you want to proceed? If you click proceed, which I'm not going to do currently, that will wipe all previous recordings for that camera and start fresh. Your Data is not mirrored between the NVRs. The NVRs are only storing data relevant to cameras that are on them. So that is something to be aware of. It is not a high availability system. It is just effectively a JBOD system to use a storage term. So it's just a, just a bunch of disks slash just a bunch of NVRs. They are stacked in that way to increase capacity, not resilience. So. What you may occasionally see, because I have seen this, is you will sometimes get duplicated cameras if they are unadopted. To clear that, you just refresh the page. That is where both NVRs have picked up the camera. You can obviously adopt more cameras on, adopt those two in. And if you go into now the live view, initially what you get is a per NVR view. So you can see here we've got the G5 bullet and the AI Theta. And if we go down here to the live view option, you can see we've got the option for the other NVR, uh, whereby you can see the G5 Flex and the Doorbell Pro all looking at each other basically in a roundabout way. Now, if you wish to change this default view or create a view for a viewport, for example, obviously you can go in select a live view, go add live view, and then you can select which cameras you wish. So we are gonna add the AI Theta, the Pro, the G5 Bullet, and the G5 Flex. We're gonna save that. And there we go, you can see all four cameras from two separate NVRs on one view. Now, obviously, you can select that as a view for a viewport, for example, now, and that will display the cameras from each MBR accordingly. Now, going back to the dashboard, you will see that we have gained a 
couple of cameras now. So the camera capacity is at 11% of 100%. And if we switch over to the second NVR, you'll see we're at 6% of 100%, uh, meaning that obviously we've got quite a bit of room for expansion in the future if we need to. But if you are using your NVR and you are already quite high up, stacking is now a viable option for this. It will allow you to add more cameras into your system should you require it and you can balance the cameras to a specific nvr should you require it now should you wish to move a camera from one nvr from parent to child or child to parent uh, to do this you simply select the camera go into the settings for that camera and select which nvr you would like it to be recording to from the drop down now you will get this alert says all prior recordings will be erased are you sure you want to proceed? When you do this, all previous recordings for that camera will be wiped and you will lose the history of that camera. So be aware and be cautious with that. But once you click proceed, you'll see the camera will move, re-adopt to the different NVR, and you can see we've gone from 6D to 6E. And if we wish to move it back, the procedure is exactly the same. And back it goes obviously any history on that camera now will be missing so if i go into the playback and look at the g5 flex you will see that there is no i can't select any history on that so that is something to be aware of in the settings page any settings you specify on the parent nvr will be duplicated to the child nvr so i have set up the global recording settings here which is new in 2.8 uh, I have no exclusion, so all of my cameras will abide by these settings. There's nothing in system that needs to be changed, really. Playback as well displays all the cameras available on both NVRs, should you need it. With this latest update, Ubiquiti stacking has become a viable option in production. Some of the things, however, I will say to be aware of are, number one, make sure that you give your NVRs time to actually bring themselves fully into sync. So that's giving them time to sort any storage arrays out, which can take half a day or a day or even longer if you have large storage arrays. The CPU load on the NVRs does go up quite hard if you haven't given this time because unfortunately it is a software array that is built into the NVRs. Also, you may encounter problems moving cameras between NVRs until the arrays have initialized. Number two, make sure that you're prepared to lose historic data. Unfortunately, it still does not guarantee that you will keep all the data on the existing NVR. This is something that hopefully Ubiquiti will do something about in the future, maybe allowing us to back up to the fabled NAS that may be coming along. We shall see. Three, make sure you have a DHCP server running on your basically your CCTV network, whichever VLAN or physical LAN you use to control your camera network. Obviously this should be separate from your main production network anyway, but for now, until it's fixed, you cannot specify your child NVR to have its own static IP. So the only thing you'll be able to do is set that via a DHCP reservation or leave it on just DHCP. It does seem to behave itself. It doesn't seem to lose its cameras. I haven't hit any problems while I've been testing. So I can't say anything untoward about it, but obviously it's nice to have NVRs on static addresses. And finally, one thing to remember with some of the early NVRs is they do have a USB pen in them and they do have flash storage. This has been a bit of a pain recently with flash storage devices dying. An option you will get as well with your NVRs, if you haven't done so already, is to migrate off of the flash storage onto the hard disks. Make sure you get that done. So hopefully this has been useful to you. Please feel free to comment down below, like, subscribe, share, all the normal stuff, and any questions I will do my best to answer. If you ask any questions, you'll find me here on YouTube, over on TikTok, link down below for the Discord, all the normal stuff and you'll find me in most of the ubiquity facebook groups also so hopefully this will be uh, something that you'll be rolling out soon and i will catch you again in the next